Now we can take this guy and we can do completing the square on this. I want I just I want to show you again so you have another example of this. Is this guy a positive one? Yeah. No, but can you make it positive one? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I factor out the negative one, take out that common or excuse me, take out that lead coefficient, and what do you have on the inside here? X squared minus 6x leaves some space because you don't have to fill that in and then minus 5. Is that okay to leave some space there? Now we know that this guy is supposed to factor as something that's squared but as we saw in the last example it's only going to be the first part of this. So that's what's going to go here. Now how do I figure out how this factors. Remember how we did that? Divide negative 6 by 2 and you get what? I get negative 3. What's negative 3 squared? Plus 9. But I can't just put a plus 9 here because that changes it. What do I have to do? Now, just so you guys don't get confused with what you were doing with completing the square from solving equations, with an equation, what you would do to one side, you would do to the other side of the equation, right? But I don't have the ability to work with two sides of an equation. I just have to work with the expression I have here. <coughs> Alright, so let's see. All of this stuff gave me x minus 3 squared. What about this minus 9 on the inside? What do, what do we do with him? So I get what? positive 9 and here is my minus 5. So when I put this in its final form I have negative 1 times x minus 3 squared plus 4. Do you all agree with that? From this form right here can you tell me the vertex? Positive 3, positive 4. Can you tell me the axis of symmetry? x equals 3. Let's go ahead and do the easy part. Can you tell me the y-intercept? Remember, you can go back to the original function to find the y-intercept. What is it? It's just negative 5, right? If I plug in 0, that guy's gone, that guy's gone, I get negative 5. What about your x-intercepts? For the x-intercept, you set the function equal to 0. So that's 0 equals negative x squared plus 6x minus 5. Now, l before we go here, are we, gonna, are we supposed to have x-intercepts? Maybe, but on this one we will. No. Your vertex is, is located above or below? It's above. Uh, Wait, your vertex is located above. Are you opening up or down? down. How do you know it's opening down? Negative coefficient of 1. Use what you know so that your answers make sense. I'm sorry if I'm talking in a rough tone of voice right here. You know it's above the x-axis and it opens down. It must cross the x-axis. So solve this. I don't like the way this is written. I don't like having a negative here. And since I have an equation, there are things that I can do. What am I going to do? Multiply everything times a negative 1, so you get x squared minus 6x plus 5. It factors? Finally, something useful, Mr. Craig. So how does it factor? Now, I'll help you out here. How about x minus 5, x minus 1? Is that right? I know you were not about to say something weird like, positive 6 and negative 1 because you're trying to break down the 5. So this means that x equals what? 5, five or x equals 1. Now, notice what I have here. These guys are zeros for my function. Since they are real, these guys will become your x-intercepts. 
So real zeros are equivalent to x-intercepts, and so you would say 5, 0, and 1, 0. Do you all agree? So the negative 1 that's left hanging out there just has no relevance to the x-intercept? I mean, once you get to the bottom, it's Well, see, with an x-intercept, you get to work in an equation. So when I have this equation, I think about how do I solve this? If I multiply everything times a negative 1, I still have 0 over here, it, and it changes those signs. Since it's a constant factor, I can divide everything by that. Right, but you still have a negative 1 in front of your factored out x minus 5, x minus 1. Okay, what so, I'm saying is if, so you're right. If I had this, you're saying that, right? Yeah. Okay. So I'm just saying that at that point, it's irrelevant. All it's done at thus far is to tell you that the parabola is opening down. Correct. It tells you that the parabola is opening down. Right. Because does negative 1 ever equal 0? So he but does not contribute. Very, very seldom that we get some number that we factor out that you can literally throw away because it has no relevance in anything in the answer. If, if, if I said just... Right, but you still have the negative coefficient there. I mean, you still have it. If, if I were to say, here's a, it's, if I were to say factor completely, the negative one is part of the factorization. If I say solve, constant factors don't really matter. I can divide out those guys. That's the difference there between... An expression has to keep everything equivalent and the same. An equation, you can add the same thing to both sides, multiply and divide, and get something else. So let's take this information and graph this. So I figure out how I'm going to do this. This just is not going to look right. Well, you got the information already written down, so I can just. So what do we say the vertex was? Three, four. 3, 4. What is your, see, the axis of symmetry? X equals, X equals 3. You have two nice x-intercepts, 5, 0, 1, 0. What's your y-intercept? 0, negative 5. Let's plot these and make sure they all line up correctly. Y-intercept is 0, negative 5. X-intercepts at 1, 0, 5, 0. And your vertex is at 3, 4. And you have an axis of symmetry that does this. Do you think I'm going to get a parabola here? The lead coefficient was negative 1. But that absolute value is just positive 1. So that means it's going to have the normal parabolic shape. So 1 squared is 1. 2 squared is 4. 3 squared is down 9 and so on. And you see that this guy right here is three units away, and that's also three units away from that axis of symmetry. So we connect the dots, like a nice smooth curve. And when you check this, you see it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Now, further analyzing this guy, we know that for the vertex, the x-coordinate is negative b over 2a. So that means for me, negative, what was b in this problem? Well, is it the original? You go back to the original okay. coordinates. So that's uh, the coefficients. That's 6. 2 times what was a? Negative 1. What's negative 6 over negative 2? positive 3, which matches up with the vertex I have here. If you do f of 3, that's negative 3 squared plus 6 times 3 minus 5. 9 negative plus 18 minus 5 gives you 4. So does that match up with my vertex? Everything is connected. 